Hi everyone. In this tutorial, you will learn how to set up your Prism Drive so you can host your own website. Before we get started, there are two things you'll need to do. First, you will need a program that lets you connect to your Prism Drive. Since I'm using Windows, I'm going to use a program called WinSCP. If you don't have WinSCP installed, you can easily get it from either OIT software distribution site or you can download it directly from the WinSCP website. Another option is to use a Georgia Tech campus computer, as those typically already have WinSCP installed. Next, write a simple web page. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to visit your PRISM website and see your test page. For my web page, I wrote some HTML code to display hello world whenever someone visits my website. Now, let's get started. First, we'll need to connect to our PRISM drive, so let's go ahead and open up WinSCP. Now, to connect to your PRISM drive, under hostname, you should put acme.gatech.edu. Then, just put in your Georgia Tech username and password and click login. Logging into your PRISM drive can take some time, so just be patient. If this is the first time you are connecting to your PRISM drive using WinSCP, you will get this warning about the server host key not being found. Don't worry about this, as this just happens anytime you are connecting to the PRISM server for the first time. If you don't want to see this warning ever again, then click yes so that the host key is saved. Before you see your PRISM drive, you might see this Terms of Use message. You should read over this as it contains some important information. If you don't want to ever see this message ever again, then just make sure to click the box next to Never Show This Banner Again before hitting Continue. If you have successfully connected to your account, then WinSTP should now be showing various files and folders. On the left half, you should be seeing the files and folders located on the computer you're using. On the right half, you should be seeing files and folders that are located on your PRISM drive. To host a website, you will need to put all your web page files into a folder called public underscore HTML. If you don't have a public underscore HTML folder already, you will need to make one. To do this, just right click over the prism area of WinSCP, then go to new and select directory. Finally, just type in public underscore HTML and hit OK. Let's now transfer our web page files over to the public underscore HTML directory. First, let's go into the public underscore HTML folder by double clicking on it. Since I just created it, there are no files in here. Now, on your computer, go to whichever folder has your web page files. I happen to have my folder already open. To move your files to your PRISM drive, all you need to do is drag these files over and drop them into the PRISM section. WinSCP will then ask you if you want to copy these files over. Since we do, we'll just hit copy. If you don't want to see this message over and over again, then just make sure to select do not show this dialog box again before hitting copy. For your PRISM website, your default web page should be named index.html. This page will always be the first page that is displayed whenever someone visits your website. If your file isn't named that already, rename your default web page to index.html. You can do this by right clicking on the file, going to rename, and then just typing in index.html. So now that we've set up our public underscore HTML folder and we've transferred over our files, let's see if we can visit our web page. Go to your browser and in the URL type www.prism.gatech.edu forward slash tilde and then your username which in my case is dmanitunga3.
Most likely, you are now seeing a web page that says forbidden. You do not have permissions to access this folder. The reason we are getting this forbidden page is because we did not set the permissions for our website files. So let's go back to WinSCP. If you go to your index.html file and right click on it and then select properties, at the bottom you should see a list of three types of users, owner, group, and others. Next to each user, there's a list of permissions that basically say what the user is allowed to do with the file. So, the permissions next to owner say what you can do to your file. The group permissions say what anyone in the GT person group can do to your file. And the permissions next to others lists what things anyone can do to your file. There are three types of permissions. R, which is for read, W, which is for write, and X, which is for execute. Read means that the user is allowed to read your file as if it were some text document. Write means the user can edit and change the file, while execute means the user can run your file as if it were a program. For your web page files, you should set the permissions to something I like to call read, 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 write, execute, execute, execute. This basically means that every type of user can read and execute your file but only the owner, aka you, can edit it. So let's set the permissions for the index.html file and try reloading the web page. The reason we are still getting the forbidden page is because not only do you have to set these permissions for your web page files, but you need to set these permissions for any folders these files are located in which for us means we need to set the permissions for the public underscore HTML folder and our actual PRISM folder. If we double click on the up arrow folder, we can go back outside the public underscore HTML directory. Now, we can right click on the public underscore HTML folder and go to properties again to set its permissions. For me, the public underscore HTML folder already has those permissions set, so I'll just leave it the same. Finally, we need to set the permissions for our PRISM folder, so let's double click on the up arrow folder again. You should now see a list of folders with various Georgia Tech usernames. Find the folder with your username and then set its permissions to read, 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 write, execute, execute, execute. Now that you've set all the permissions, if you reload your web page one more time, you should now see the test page you wrote. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and have fun in making your own web pages.